You know, I was going to do a short. We ain't doing a short today. First of all, we had some tasty matchups today. And Team Chaos, Group Chaos, our Commonwealth and Friends. Yo, Group B is going to be mad. <laughs> group B is going to be mad. Yo, let's talk about this real quick. It's day eight. And this is going to be my last breakfast. Everything else is going to be shorts. Just because I won't have my equipment with me. So everything else will be shorts. Um, following this point in it, I might try to squeeze some in, but let's get to the action. You don't care about my issues. You care about the results. The first game of the day, the rematch of last Women's World Cup, Netherlands versus the USA. And that was a fun matchup, a great matchup of teams and styles. It's great to see top teams going back and forth. The pace at which they move the ball, how quickly they counter, how well they look. It is always great to see top teams playing because then you kind of can see you can aspire to it. It doesn't mean I don't love seeing the underdogs. But when you have two top teams playing, the quality, the chances that are there, they are beautiful. And I love taking it in. But that game ends in a 1-1 draw. The Netherlands, I think, took more of the first half. And in the second half, the U.S. definitely were playing, trying to level, and ultimately did. Jill Root scoring the 17th minute for the Netherlands. And then Lindsey Horan getting... The equalizer in a 62nd minute for the U.S. Leaves both teams with four points at this point. And I think with their last matchups, the U.S. playing Portugal and the Netherlands playing Vietnam. I feel that the Netherlands are in a better spot to maybe top the group just by goal difference, I believe. Which means they're going to be playing a second place and the U.S. will play in a first place. Which will be very interesting to see how it goes out. Unless the U.S. just take it to Portugal. Which I don't really see it. I love what the Netherlands tried to do. Maybe get the U.S. to sit back a bit. You know, I think the U.S. is better than just sitting on the ball, pressing and creating counters. I think as the game evolves, that type of strategy doesn't always work, especially with a top team like the Netherlands, where they can suck in that first wave, and then from there, then you can start to create those opportunities in behind with the space and come through. And you saw that on their goal, where it's just a counter opportunity. The ball's moving. They win the second ball. The ball's moving up the pitch. Get it out wide. Bad scoring pass, but then they recover it and put it in the back of the net. So Jill Rude scores. Netherlands don't lose when she scores. But they drew, so that is still alive. So that group, E, looking interesting. Portugal followed that up with a 2-0 win over Vietnam. And this was a game where Vietnam, you know, didn't have much of anything. But with nine shots on target, 29 shots overall, if you're Portugal, you're thinking to yourself, if only you had maybe buried a few more chances, especially for the, uh, for the goal difference aspect i feel like they could have got a little bit more going on here but getting the two goals definitely helps everyone's on a one goal difference minus the u.s who are on three as they did uh beat the netherlands i mean not they beat vietnam uh three nil so group e is shaping up well with again usa portugal in the final match day and the netherlands vietnam so it's a very interesting match day i'm looking forward to seeing how that one goes through that being said that being said, the game of the day. First of all, Nigeria, Falcons, we see you. Soar, fly, fly high. This game was everything. This game was everything. And the story of this game is that there was a lot of big names weren't in this game. So Nigeria 3, Australia 2. You had for Australia, no Mary Fowler, no Sam Kerr. Fowler and percussion protocol. Sam Kerr still nursing the calf. Thoughts are she will be available for the third matchup. And now she will have to be available for the third matchup. And then Nigeria didn't start Asiat Oshawala. And that was a bit of a surprise. But you saw what was happening in the beginning part of this game. Australia was really pushing the pace. Well, they weren't even pushing the pace. They were playing at their pace. Australia's pace can be very counterish. But again, this whole group, Group B, is a group of counters. Like, this should have been called, this should have been Group C, because every team loves to counter. Not everyone here loves the build up from the back always. 
they have the ability to do, but they don't always. But you saw, and it felt like if Osh, if <laughs> I felt this game didn't really turn until about maybe the thirty second minute. And that's when Nigeria started to extend their press a bit. And when you extended that gave Australia more space. And that kind of invited Australia to play a little bit more up and down. And they would get chances. And then in the return, Nigeria would get chances of their own. And this started at about the 32nd minutes. Um, and that's when you get Emily Van Eggman in a 46th minute of additional time in the first half scoring on a great setup. The goal kick is taken poorly. It's a two on five, but they're able to square the ball to Van Eggman, and she scores the opening goal. And then Nigeria came back in that same additional time. <laughs> Uchenna Kanu scores in the forty in the fifty first minute of additional time in the first half, leveling off the game. And it truly, <laughs> at this point, you're like okay, this is a draw now. The Canadian in me is watching this saying, I, Australia winning this makes this a lot easier. The African in me says, they, we're going for Team Chaos, aren't we? We are going for Team Chaos. So that happens. When the substitution for Oshala comes, that to me is the, that's when the game just changes. Because, again, Canoe is a good striker in, her, in herself. There's no doubt about what she can do. We've seen her do it in the NWSL. We've seen her do it in the Mexican League. But Oshala is a different animal. Oshala is just different. And when she comes in in a 64th minute, immediately her presence causes a goal off. A second ball rotated in. You get that goal in from Ohale. Gets it in, and then Oshala finishes it off. What we thought was comfortably at that seventy-second minute, and that's just a bad mix-up between Kennedy and the goalkeeper. Truly, because that happens, Arnold and Kennedy don't communicate. Ironically, when I saw this goal happen, my internet was freezing because <laughs> I was watching on the stream. So. I saw it happening in slow motion. So you see, the I saw the first frame where Kennedy is approaching the ball. And then you see her footing kind of slow. And you're like, oh, this is going to be awkward. And then you see Arnold come out in my next frame. And then you see the gap. And it's like, oh, you better head that properly. Because if not, Oshala's running past you. And then the next frame is, it's not headed properly. And you see Oshala take two strides. And it's done. After two strides... If you're even, she's leaving. She gets around, scores. 3-1 for the Super Falcons. African Twitter is celebrating. <laughs> I'm getting killed in the chats. <laughs> oh, man. Good times, good times. But then Elena Kennedy gets one back in the 90th plus 10 minutes, the 100th minute of additional time. And then at the end, they do come off and score. They hit a, a few chances. I think if you're Australia looking back at this game, you think to yourself, so many opportunities left on this pitch. And you're seeing a trend with, in terms of the stats, the thing that Nigeria finds themselves rather comfortable doing is Nigeria gives up high numbers of corners. I think they just feel a lot better defending them because they gave up 11 corners versus Australia. They gave up, no, 11 corners versus Canada. They gave up 15 corners versus Australia. Set pieces are something they feel very confident in defending, which hasn't hurt them yet. But if you keep on giving teams these types of opportunities, they will bury some. And they've got that's the, that's the one thing I'll say. Other than that, I think Nigeria chose to be a little bit more ambitious in this game, and it helped. It truly helped. Because if not for their lack of ambition in Canada, they may be sitting on six points here. I still think Canada should have won that game, but. They should have been sitting on six points versus just the four that they are. And what this sets up for is Group B is essentially every team safe for Ireland are alive. But it seems like the Commonwealth teams will be like, hey, Ireland, you look, we, we kind of don't. Royal monarchy? I don't know. But it'll be interesting. So I'm not even going to try to go through all the different scenarios. But the simplest way to put it is this. 
for match day three in Group B. If Canada wins and draws, or and Nigeria wins or draws, goal difference will separate Canada and Nigeria. If Nigeria wins and Australia wins, Nigeria tops the group and Australia is our runner-up. If Australia wins and Nigeria loses, Australia tops the group and Canada are runners-up. And if Canada wins and Nigeria loses, Canada still tops the group and Nigeria is still runners-up. Every team has two scenarios. Every team has two scenarios of qualifying, um, but what we know is Australia needs to win to go through. Anything outside of a win for Australia means they are out. If it's a draw, they are not moving on. They can't catch any team. So this will be a very exciting match day three on a Monday morning. I'll be somewhere with no reception, but hopefully the tweets or the X's will, will reach out. We'll go from there. Guys, how did you enjoy Match Day 8? Let me know in the comments down below. This World Cup is shaping up to be chaotic. And it's also good that we've now reached the point where both teams can store in games. Um, I'm not trying to say this facetiously, but it's good that these games are now creating the drama that I thought this World Cup would give us. And as this group play continues, I hope we get to see more of it. But guys, let me know in the comments down below. What have you liked so far in this World Cup? And I'll see you in the shorts as the week goes on.